Welcome to Unshakable with Human Design, the show dedicated to helping entrepreneurs use human design to shift from hustle to flow without sacrificing results. Come here to become an unshakable human and build an unshakable business according to your human design. I'm your host, Nicole Lano. Hello and welcome to Unshakable with Human Design, everybody. I'm your host, Nicole Lano. And we are here for the fifth installment of our human design profile series, where we are going to talk about the line five. And this is obviously the one I've been waiting for because the work that I have done on becoming a five, it still exists every single day. I think about what it means to be a five. And I'm going to really reflect my own personal experience in this episode. I try to do that as much as I can, give you real and practical applications of how all of these can look. But this one, I'm going to talk a little bit more about my story because I think it's relevant. And I talk about these concepts that in order to live your purpose, according to your human design, in order to reach that summit that we're all waiting for, we're all working toward is to live our full potential. You've got to be your profile. You've got to be acting like the person written on the page, like the character description and whatever that means to you. And obviously, I've used the analogy on here of a character in a movie, that Forrest Gump was a character that was written on a page, it was a description of what he was like. And then they thought about different actors and what they would bring to that description now, there were probably a lot of choices, people who could have played that role. And then there were some that would feel really wrong playing that role. I use that analogy of saying Jack Nicholson playing Forrest Gump probably is not a movie that works. Not in the same way, for sure. I don't know if you get what you need to get from Jack Nicholson in order to be fully invested in the character that is Forrest Gump and to feel the way that you feel for him. Now, could someone other than Tom Hanks have played that character? Yeah. It would have been different, but they would have taken the base character and added their own stuff to it. And that's what profile is. There's no cookie cutter way to be a five or to be a two or to be a three. There are guidelines. There are certain things where if you're not doing these things, then you're probably not going to feel right. You're not going to be living as this character. You're going to be doing something else. Jack Nicholson playing kind of innocent and sometimes clueless in the most beautiful way. He might not have been able to bring that same level to it that Tom Hanks did, where there was just this childlike innocence to him. If you're not playing the innocence, if you aren't embodying the innocence of Forrest Gump, then you're missing a key component of that character. You're missing a key component that makes the movie work. Your movie is your purpose. The theme of your purpose is the plot line of your movie. It is the greater theme that is playing out. And all the activations in your human design chart that are playing out, adding to what becomes you bringing you to this character. But the character that is making its way through this story is your profile. It is the role you are here to play. And if you aren't playing it with, if it's the innocence, if it's the open heart of the four, if it is the experimentation of the three, or what we're going to talk about with the five, the practicality and the universalization, if you aren't bringing these aspects to your life, then you're going to miss the key storyline of your movie. And then you wonder why the movie ends and it doesn't feel satisfying. It doesn't feel like you lived your purpose, like your potential was fully reached. So many of us are trying to reach our full potential. Well, how do we do that? You got to be yourself. That is above all things what human design teaches us, that we have a purpose, that your potential is real, that calling that you feel inside of yourself is real. That little voice inside of you that says there's more, I could be more out in the world. Well, what does that look like to you? And how do you bring your more out into the world? What is the more? How do you find it? Your profile is what helps you walk that path and to start to see your potential come out. And it comes out really naturally. 
Not in this way where you're thinking about it all the time, reading books, listening to podcasts, downloading Instagram carousels and saving them for later, all of that stuff. No, it comes from the living. They can inform it. They can be useful, but they are not even close to the whole game. If that's all you're doing and you're not experimenting and embodying your design and working toward that, then you're missing the game. And if you don't know how to work toward embodying and integrating your design, then that's where you seek help. Doesn't have to be me. Just find somebody who can coach you. Find somebody who can help you, who actually cares. And I must say, who actually knows what they're talking about, who has actually embodied it themselves and they didn't just read it in a book themselves and then try to sell you something. Sorry, had to throw that in there. Dealing saucy today. Talking about my five lines. I'm getting all excited. So just before we start, if you want, we do have a free guide for this that will help so that you don't have to remember these concepts. The guide is on finding your brand voice, your X factor through your human design profile. So we're going to talk a lot about what the five is in this episode. And we talk about what they are and how the lines operate. And then in the guide, we go into a little bit more about how you could apply that to your brand voice, what that will look like. We go into that a little bit deeper. So if you want the free guide, all you have to do is go to Instagram and DM me the word X factor, the letter X, and then the word factor, all one word, and we will send it to you. Or go to nicolelano.com forward slash X factor, and you can download it right there. And then if you want to enter, we have a fun contest. If you'd like to have a reading on the show, if you'd like to come on the show, chat with me, we look at your chart, you ask me whatever human design questions you have burning on your heart, and I will answer them for you. If you would like to do that, subscribe to this show right now, hit the little follow button, and then take a screenshot of this episode that you're listening to, share it on Instagram, on your Instagram stories, tag me. Again, I'm at Nicole Leno official, and then you're done. Tell us why you love the episode, and we will enter you into the contest, and you could win a spot on the show. We'll be announcing that after this series is over. Okay, without further ado, let's talk about the five line This episode is for you. If you are a 2-5 profile, a 3-5, a 5-1, or a 5-2. Now, again, what we've talked about in the other episodes, the first number, if you are a 5-1 or a 5-2, your 5 is your personality. This is the one that you identify the most with. This is going to be the piece that you put out in the world. The 5 is something you're really going to want to pay attention to. You are going to have a strong projection field that you are aware of, and we will talk about what the projection field actually means later in this episode. This is a key part of understanding what it means to be a five, so do not skip the end of this episode because the projection field is almost everything. It's so much. It's so much. Please don't miss it. So if you have the five in the front, you have the projection field, and the five is your personality number. This is going to be the part that you identify with the most. You're going to say, yeah, that's me. It's going to be very in your face. Now, if you are a 2-5 or you are a 3-5, then the 5 is your unconscious line. And this is going to be kind of a background thing. You might be less aware of the projection field. You might be less aware of some of these other things. It's going to be something that other people see in you more than you see in yourself. Now, that 5 line, that projection, that can also feel a little like what's going on here because you don't identify with it. So when I talk about the projection field, this might be something that you're like, yeah, I know that happens, but I'm not as aware of it in my day-to-day life. Whereas if you have a five in front, if you're five one or five two, like me, I am a five one, just for anybody who doesn't know already, I talk about it a lot, but I'm a five one, very aware of the projection field where it can stop you in your tracks. And it's something that you have to learn to work with. So I highly recommend that if you're a five, get deeper into this topic, okay? So let's talk about this. In traditional human design, the five line is called the heretic. And Ra, who is the founder of human design, he was a five one. He had strong thoughts and I think a bit of trauma about being a five because it's not easy. It is not easy to be a five. It's not easy to deal with the projection field because you are not in control of it, and it controls the way that people see you. Now, the five, the heretic, a heretic, you can think about them as somebody on their soapbox, talking a good game, spreading the word about something, really selling it, so to speak. And then the heretic gets burned at the stake. And I'll just say this about the five. When I first read about the five, I was like, okay, I downloaded my chart. You're five one. What's that mean? I looked it up and I was like, 
oh my God, this is the worst thing ever. I felt there was truth in it. I did not at any point say, that's not true. I don't have that. That's not me. I said, that's me. And oh my God, my worst fears have been realized. It really is as bad as I always thought. I'm doomed because this sounds really awful. Because when you're called a heretic, it's not exactly something that you want to be called. It's not exactly a name that you want to attach to yourself. And nobody wants to be burned at the stake. Nobody wants to be stoned to death. And we can associate ourselves with that because of this name that it's been given. But really what it means to be the five, to me, the archetype that I use is you're a problem solver. It's the archetype of a problem solver. It's core to who we are. The way that I've structured talking about all of these lines in these episodes are that the archetype is the being. It's the how. It's the what we do. And it is the living of the design. It is the living of the profile. So you've got to be living as a problem solver. It's why it makes us good marketers. It's why typically fives have a knack for being able to sell stuff. Because we solve problems. And how do you sell stuff? You sell problem solving. You sell solutions to people's problems. That's why people buy things. Even if something feels good, it solves a problem. A massage solves the problem of I'm stressed out or I need to relax. I'm tired. I want to feel a certain way. It's driving toward a desire or it's running away from a pain. We inherently understand that because we are problem solvers. Whether you're selling something or not, You've got to be solving problems. It's who you're here to be. It is the essence of your being. It's how you show up. It's how you live your purpose. Your purpose has something to do with solving problems, usually for other people. Because we are in transpersonal territory with a five in the front, you are going to have transpersonal energy. If you are a five one or a five two, your destiny is connected to other people. You've got karma with everybody that you meet. There's always something being worked out. So life can feel like people can have and situations can have a very big effect on you. They can feel like little moments or people can make big turns and changes and shifts in your life for better or for worse. So we are on this ride of saying that When we're solving problems, when we are interacting with the world, when we're being who we are meant to be, then we are cleaning up the karma that we have. And I don't think about karma necessarily like bad things that happened in past lives. It just means you have a history with everybody you meet, that there are no accidents, that you have the ability and the potential to be a stranger of consequence in someone's life, and they have the potential to be a stranger of consequence in yours. There are no accidents if you're a 5'1 or a 5'2". Now, if you have the five in the back, you still have this problem-solving leadership quality to you. The five is a leader, but only if it's problem-solving. That's the moral of the story with all of these episodes is I want you to see that there's potential in your profile, but you have to look at it and say, I'm accepting and owning the fact that this is me, and I'm going to notice the shadows, and I'm going to recognize them. And I'm going to own the gifts. And I'm going to really step into this, even if it's scary. I'm going to accept the fact that this is core to who I am. If I'm not solving problems, and it doesn't mean I'm doing it 24-7, although I naturally look at things being like, how can I fix that? We are the fixer. We are the savior. The archetype of the savior is another way that people look at it. I don't necessarily call it that. Because I don't want people to misunderstand that they should be saving people all the time. We are always looking for practical solutions to problems. We just naturally look at situations and go, that could be done more efficiently. You know what would really help? Not everybody always wants to hear that, though. So we have to be careful about who we solve problems for. Now, the potential to ascend for our brand, for our brand voice, for our business with a five, is the influencer. When we're solving problems and we are living it and we are owning that we are a unique, practical, powerful problem solver with the ability to save people, if they are for us to save, that we can become an influencer. 
And this is different than the influence of the four because the influence of the five is about the larger audience. It is an influence on strangers. It is an influence on more the collective level than on the tribal level. That can be a little disheartening at times for us too because we can have very little influence on the people we know and lots of influence on people who just meet us. So these are all things to consider when we build our business. When we start to understand how our energy works, what people need from us, and how they connect with us. Now, I started this out by saying that I hated my profile when I first read it. I was just like, this is awful. Emotional authority is like, oh my God, why did I get the hardest test in life of this profile, this authority? And I don't know if my type is necessarily the hardest, although they all have their challenges. But I certainly looked at this like, this is no good. This is not going to be fun. Now I know why life has been difficult. But it became a lot less difficult when I stopped feeling that way and I looked at it and I said, well, if this is what it is, then I might as well make the best of it. There's nothing in human design that's all bad. There is nothing in us that is inherently bad. There is a spectrum. And I can choose to work and integrate the best of all the pieces that I am and work with them, challenges and all, figure out how to ride that wave and how to navigate life as this being, not trying to be somebody else, because I tried that before. I tried being other people. It did not work for me. If you're a five and you try to go out there and live life as a four, probably will not work for you. Trying to make all these buddy-buddy connections and have these close friendships and all of this stuff, it doesn't mean that you can't. It just means that it's probably not going to grow your business the way that it grows a four's business. That's not how we do it. Profile and our design in general can tell us where to put our energy. What is the best way for us, the best method for us? Where does our energy and our effort carry the furthest and carry the most weight? So the projection field, let's talk about this. The five carries a projection field no matter where you have it. All fives have it. All of those four profiles will have a projection field. That's different than the projection field of the two. Now, if you're a five two, you have both. So understanding both of them is going to be important for you. But people look into the two. They can see into you. The five, we are more like a mirror. The projection field shows people what we can do for them or what they think we can do for them. And sometimes they're right and sometimes they are wrong. It's what your authority tells you, whether you are there to solve that person's problem or not. They see something in us, and we don't know what it is that they really want, but they see the Savior. I think you can help me with this. Welcome to the world of being a five. There's always people thinking, I bet you can help me. You know what I need from you? And it can honestly be quite exhausting. People always need something, and they're always looking to you. And we can solve problems, and we can fix things. But we can also feel like we have to be doing it all the time and for everybody that we meet. And then when we don't meet the expectations that they set that they did not share with us, they don't even know sometimes. But there can be disappointment at the end. Or there can be a feeling of, I thought you would do more for me or you would keep doing it. So relationships can be challenging with a five in your profile. And learning how to work with the projection field, learning how it works, one of the greatest lessons of my life. And it is one that I reflect on every single day. I don't harp on it, but I'm incredibly aware of it. And I have learned how you can use it to your advantage with integrity. It's always about how do I use this and use it to my advantage grounded in integrity. Is really important for me as well. <laughs> My unconscious earth gate is about integrity. So I'm very hyper aware of that as well. And this is how the design works. We start realizing the pieces that are there and seeing that there is this through line. There's always these threads connecting everything together, forming how we step into the highest version of ourselves. And then when we do that, that's when we get in that 
I'll have what she's having energy where people just look at you and they're like, I see you for who you are. I see you for what you do. And I want to be that authentic too. They want to be near you. That is what magnetism really is about. Magnetism is about you sending out a signal that's completely and authentically you. And then the people who receive it say, I need this energy. This is the thing that I'm seeking. This is the thing that I want to be connected with. Whether it's a friend, a business colleague, a client, whatever it is. But people get drawn to you because they are vibing with the signal. And if you're not being authentic to who you are, you're sending out an inauthentic signal. And then you are attracting the wrong people. You're getting people that don't guide you and help you along your purpose path. Instead, you're getting people who hold you where you are. And if you are part of that transpersonal world where you have that five line in the front, the five one, five two, and also if you're a six two or six three, you have this as well, this transpersonal profile, that signal you send out is incredibly important because the people you encounter are going to be the people you have karma with. They are going to be the ones that have a significant impact on your life and you on them. So this is how this all works. I hope that this helps you understand the five. I could honestly go on and on. I told you, I think about this every day, learning how to embrace the five, to embrace my role as a five, the importance of that, the challenges of that, to stay out of the shadows of that, to be able to put myself out there as a true five, to not be afraid of the potential that exists as a five. All of that is what I work on every day and has transformed my life, my business. I get very aligned people connecting with me now joining my programs, paying me for readings, paying me for one-on-one -on -one coaching. The people who come to me now come to me for what I really can deliver. And I can totally suss out the people who are not there for the right reasons or who I am not connected with in a way where I can really help them. They don't have a problem I can solve or they're not the right person for me to solve it. All of that is tied to my design. All of that is tied to me following my authority, following my strategy, being in alignment with my human design type as a manifesting generator and living life as a 5-1, nurturing both sides of my profile. So I hope that you found this useful. I hope this gave you a window into how you can more embody your five line. And again, if you want that free guide on how to find your X factor according to your human design profile, DM me the word X factor on Instagram. I'm at Nicole Lano official or go to NicoleLano.com forward slash X Factor, and you can download the guide right there. And if you want to enter the contest that we have running to have a human design reading here on the show, all you have to do is take a little snapshot of you listening to this episode, follow the show on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you're listening to it, take a screenshot and post it to Instagram, tell us why you're loving this series, and tag me. I'm at Nicole Ano Official. Thanks so much for being here. Like I said, I could have gone on and on about this. But we're going to leave it here because I feel like we are complete. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end. I appreciate you. And remember, in order to have an unshakable business, you must first become an unshakable human. So thanks for letting us help you on your journey of becoming unshakable with human design today, everybody. We'll see you next time. If you love this episode and you're a fan of the show, please show us the love on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you're listening to the show and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with other entrepreneurs on their human design journey, join our free Facebook community, Human Design for Entrepreneurs. Go to nicolelano.me forward slash podcast links to join the group, book a human design reading with me, or access our free human design resources. We'll see you there.